Hi and welcome back to Geeking with Jody. I'm a real life programmer and share with you some cool stuff I see or I feel that they can help you to step up your programming. This time I saw this super cool fun joke on programming humor. You may have seen it too. This is a triple X's cosmic ray detection function in only seven lines super cool for such a task i really laughed with it uh also another tens of thousands of people laughed with it and liked it and there are lots of people who like it but won't push the plus button please do if you like something subscribe push the like button give hearts whatever you can do that will support and help people to continue their good job I mean, please subscribe. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the joke is about the cosmic ray. If you don't know about them, these are the high energy protons or some other particle. Maybe I'm not a professional in this sense, but they are traveling through the space and might reach Earth and might reach our computer and might reach or CPU RAM or blah blah for example you have a your RAM and you have some bits here something is written something is running and suddenly a cosmic ray high energy proton from the Sun hits it and change this 0 to 1 because this is high energy particle whoa this really can happen this can happen the probability is very 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 low if you have written a program which is not working correctly it doesn't mean that cosmic ray hit your computer it means that you have to fix your program i've even get emails from people saying ah this program is not working there should be a problem in the c compiler very unlikely there might be problems but if you are emailing someone and asking about this it means it should be your program which has a problem although most of us after seeing a problem in our program say okay let's try compile and run it once more maybe this time it works if it works it might have been the cosmic ray if this looks very unlikely i have to remind you that this might have happened in one of the belgium's regional elections or something they had this computer voting systems one of the candidates suddenly got, for example, 2048 extra votes in one of the specific machines. They tried to go through all the programs, check everything, and they didn't find anything. But since this is exactly the power of two, maybe the only explanation was a cosmic ray hit one place in RAM and changed one zero to one and added this much votes to this specific candidate fun fact is outside the atmosphere on the real cosmos this might have an even more because we are lacking the defender or earth defender the weather or whatever it is so on the satellites on the shuttles this is even a huger problem if you want to solve it you have different options one is having two different computers they calculate the same thing if the result is same you will accept this if not recalculate or you can have three computers and vote for if two have a specific answer one disagrees this should be the correct one or different methods anyway now you can see why this is super duper funny it says cosmic ray detector while true okay repeat this forever if false say cosmic ray detected so it never shows this right unless cosmic ray hits this changes this to true and you will see this but this doesn't work i will show you why you will learn more about the c compiler in maybe a new keyword in c language and other stuff let's go and write this program this won't take more than 10 minutes i hope 
I mean my colleague, not because I'm a huge, great world-class hacker, but because I want to use a X, uh, uh, sorry, 86, I mean X86 Intel hardware. I'm connected remotely to this machine. So this is a Intel-based machine, not like my Mac uh, ARM machine. Because if this is an ARM machine, the assembly will be different, more difficult for most of the people to start it. Anyway, I'm connected to this machine. I will go to here. I will uh, make, the, for example, Ray, CD Ray. I will cr let's run Tmux. It always helps you to split your windows, work more easily, and whatever. I will write a program here. We'll call it Detector C. What was the program? Ah, uh, sorry. Include the I/O because we want to print color socks. I will go with color schema. Color, color. Okay, much better. I have a main function int main void. We'll write a C program for it. Then what we had? We had while one if zero printf cosmic so this was the program right this was the same logic as this joke still the joke is super duper funny what i will do is i will compile this and i will run it ah sorry and i will wait for a cosmic ray but we know that it won't happen, so I won't wait much. But even if I would wait for thousands of years, running in thousands of computers in everywhere in the world, I won't see this. Why? Let's look at the assembly code as an output of this one. You can use something like R2. R2 is a disassembler. You will say, please analyze everything. Go to main function and show me the code this will be the code with p you can change it if you are interested you can check my ctf videos this is not good for us we will go with the easier method i just wanted to tell you that if you want to debug a program you can can use art but easier method is checking the assembly you can say detector and you can tell the compiler to save the temp files it creates now, if I do an ls, I will have all the files which were created during this uh, compile process. The object file and the assembly file and i file. Let's try the assembly file and see what is the output of this program as an assembly. I will say cat a detector assembly. Here is what is missing. I'm not sure if I'm blocking this. Uh, let me do it like this. So I'm sure that I'm not blocking the code. And I can make it a little bit smaller. Instead of cat, I will go with less, easier to follow. Ah, it's showing all of it. In the beginning, it says, okay, this is the file text definitions, or my global is main. And then I have a main function with a label here. It does some uh, initializing things in assembly. Then I have another label here, L2, and I have this jump to L2. So when the code goes through, it runs this, then it reaches L2. This is this one. And it only jumps to the same label forever so as you can see this if is not there anymore interesting even the cosmic string is not anywhere in my code so unfortunately our cosmic ray detection won't work at least this pseudocode when converted to the c and compiled with gcc why this is happening because in the beginning days people used to write code in assembly to make it blazingly fast. 
Then people started writing in C, but writing in C was kind of slower because a machine should have compiled this to assembly and people were able to write better, more optimized assembly. So C compilers started to do optimizations on the code. GCC does lots of optimizations. One of them is when it sees that you have if zero something, the compiler is sure that this will never happen. So it doesn't even translate this into assembly. So your code is initialized and then only jump to this label. Then you go here, then jump to this label. So it's only while one. Unfortunately, our cosmic detector doesn't work. How we can solve this? Let's have a look. One way is creating a variable here. I can say I have a variable. This is C99. In C99, you can have a bool type. And you say, okay, my Boolean variable is called detected. And it's initialized by zero. And here I want the detected. Here, it's a little bit more complicated. You have a variable. And this if works based on this variable. So we compile it once more. We say GCC, detector C, save the temporary things in the middle. And then we check the assembly source. I ran it with S, so with less, so you have all the code here. Okay, this is the file, this is the text. Here you have a label which defines one string, cosmic. And it says uh, in the main, same initialization first. Remember, we had LC0 and we had this string. Previous time on our loop, which was L2 because we didn't have a string. So now one of them is used for a string. So this is L3. We have this compare. We say compare this with this. Jump if equal to L3. So we are doing one comparison. If it's equal, we jump. If it's not equal, we will go here. We do some configuration on LC0. Remember, this was the cosmic string. Then move this here, move L, then call the print function. So it will call the print function with this cosmic and will write down this. And then it will jump to L3. So as long as uh, things are equal, this one, we will go in this loop. As soon as this is not equal in this combination, we will go to the print. Now this is working, but we have one more problem, one deeper step to learn. What is that? This is a program we are testing. When you want to install this program on your shuttle, on your spaceship, on for Falcon, whatever you are flying with, you always optimize it. So if you optimize your code and tell to GCC that I want optimizations on this output, again, you will lose your ray detector. Now that I've done optimization, uh, GCC, wow. GCC will go deeper when checking here. We'll see that, oh, I have one variable which have never changed or calculated again. So I can replace this with zero, doing lots of optimizations. So I can neglect the whole if thing. Again, it just starts even it doesn't have those initializations because it's not needed. We are doing whatever optimization we can, kind of. So it's only a loop to L2 and from L2 to the next command is jump. So I'm just going in a loop and my ray detection won't work. One idea is, okay, don't optimize it. But for sure, our Falcon do have more uh, lines than this. So I have to optimize it. I just don't want this part. I have my traveler set because we want to fly. Uh, that helps about the light. There is one interesting command keyword in C language which most of the time we, we don't use it. That is volatile. You can define your variables 
as Walter variables. If you define something as Walter, you are telling to the compiler that this might change out of this scope. So don't optimize it. How this can happen? The best example is our cosmic ray. You are telling to the compiler that don't optimize this variable. Please don't be wise. Do whatever I told you about this variable because some other part of the program or cosmic ray may change this. So please don't optimize this. One idea is cosmic ray, which is very unlikely. The other idea is if you have a multi-threaded program, you will tell it, okay, this variable might be changed by any of these. So please don't optimize. You may have a driver for some hardware and your hardware may update this uh, variable somehow. This way also you will tell that, okay, I know my CPU temperature is defined as something and then I'm checking if CPU temperature is more than 90, shut down the computer, for example. But I know that when looking into the code, I have never changed this CPU temperature. But please don't optimize and remove this because some hardware sensor may change this variable in my program somehow. This is a driver thing. Anyway, here I can define my detected variable as Walter variable. This way, I'm telling the compiler not to do optimization on this one. So even if I compile my program with the optimization, this variable won't be optimized. So if I check the assembly code of my program, you will see that uh, here I have a label which defines this. Then uh, on L2, I have this uh, check, test something, jump if equal here. If it's not equal, I'm moving this, I'm moving that, and at the end, I'm calling the print, and then again jumping to L2. Same logic which we have here. I hope you enjoyed this. It is good to learn new things. Even fun things can teach you new things. Maybe only fun things can teach you good. And I hope you enjoyed and subscribe. And if you are flying with your Falcon, please invite me to have fun, learn new things. That is so fun. And thank you for Triple, Triple X for this super fun humor.